Oh, no, we weren't recording yet. No, nope, we missed that. That would have been gold. Well, uh, <laughs> that would have been good. That would have been a good intro. But, you know, you live and you learn. The fact that she's just barely out of frame still scares the shit out of me. I I was just watching yes. The Grudge earlier. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like on edge. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I feel like the lighting has to do with it, too. Yeah, she is so everly, like, slither out of the frame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Imagine if the grudge was like that. It's like you could barely see the the whatever the kid or the lady, but then once they come in the frame, like they're all done up. It's like, oh <laughs> shit! I didn't know it was Hot Girl Summer. No. All right. Here's here's the real movie. It's a deep dark thriller about the problems with society in the year 2022. There is a killer that haunts your cell phone and is only able to be seen and only attacks using your front forward facing camera. So like while you're doing a selfie or some shit like that, some stupid shit, that's when it will walk up and fuck your shit up. But other than that, if you don't use your phone, then you're good. So it's it's like your version of like the ring, but instead of a TV, it's a front facing camera. Yeah, we'll call it the ring light. Yeah. I think that's good. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was I was thinking of like a way shittier name like <laughs> FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs> or freaking Pew Pew, you're dead. <laughs> I think oh, okay. I think Pew Pew You're Dead is actually a movie or a porno. <laughs> One of the two. I hope it's not a porno. <laughs> I hope it is a point. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible name. Oh my gosh. So I got a couple of things to go over with you. Um, you know, I've been listening to some new music. There's a lot of good new music coming out of the West Coast. Wait, That's... wait, wait. Let me guess. Hmm. Hmm. Let me guess. It's West Coast music. Yes. <laughs> According to the Nipsey Hustle shirt. Like, yes. Rocking, like nothing but West Coast. So, I heard, I'm not even going to shout out because they're going to be my, uh, the song that I'm going to put on playlist is by them. But this guy said one line where I'm grilling outside last night. I had a drink, I'm got some chicken wings on the grill or some drumsticks on the grill. Just chilling, got the music going. Everything's cool. This beat just goes hella hard. I'm like, I'm fucking rocking with it. It's on some gangster shit, right? But then he does a 180 and says, hit the bitch from the back. Now she got scoliosis. And I didn't do anything. She got, but... te- <laughs> she got tears in her eyes, but she ain't crying, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, geez, does that sound good to anybody? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's your spine is just going to be weird. Gonna be walking weird. <laughs> going to be living weird. You might need like a fucking back brace. <laughs> I'm just, I'm interested to see what he was going to rhyme next. Like my dick like NyQuil. Now she's comatosis. <laughs> I just, you know what? I'm going to be honest. I have no clue what the fuck he rhymed next because I giggled instantly. <laughs> One of those ones where you try to hold it back, but then it like bites through. <laughs> You're like, ha, 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 ha. yeah. My my rap game's a shit, and I got halitosis. Jesus <laughs> I, I I'm running out of rhymes. I don't I, know I, any more tosis. I was just gonna say your girl's filling me like eczema. <laughs> Wait, what? Like eczema. <laughs> so what is that? What is that? <laughs> no, that shit was crazy. But <laughs> also... Oh, do we... Even, uh, Fat Poppy Slim Poppy Podcast. This is our intro. Sorry for the late one. Um, back with the OGs. Yep. I'm Fat Pop. This is Slim Pop. 
And Fat Pop has a question for Slim Pop. Slim Pop will answer Fat Pop. Are men easy? Too easy. All right. <laughs> I'm not even going to say anything because... I haven't been in this situation, but I was watching another podcast and they were bringing some shit up and I just thought it was fucking hilarious. So, this girl had the audacity to speak this blatant, wretched truth. She said, y'all niggas be acting like y'all somebody. Y'all niggas be acting like you're this, you're that, like you're a deep human being. Like, it takes more to get you. But for 10 hot wings and a blue Gatorade, you'll be acting up. Mm. But the question is, which blue Gatorade? There's a difference. The, I, I like them both, personally. I prefer the light blue. And that's I literally the, the dark next, blue. That's literally the next line. <laughs> it was like, all right, but which blue Gatorade? Are we talking about the Glacier Freeze or are we talking about the Berry fucking one? I, I need the one that, that reminds me of Kool-Aid. Yep, the Berry one. It's more refreshing. Bro. Just, just off color alone. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, 10 wings, too. I mean, 10 wings and a Gatorade. Don't don't give me no boneless shit. And it's it's got to be, like, worth it. Don't just give me wings from anywhere. I don't want no straight out of a Tyson bag. They fresh right. wings. So, this is the fucked up part. Then they said, that's all you need to hit. But if you want to keep them, throw in a little extra $50 so they could get that game. Ooh, no, that, that's an easy one right there. He said, and that's a slam dunk. And this nigga yeah. replied, he said, I'm not even going to hate on you, bitch. His exact words. I'm not even going to hate on you, bitch. If you give me 10 wings, blue Gatorade, and fucking NBA 2K, I'm sliding my boxers to the side ever so softly. <laughs> Bro, sliding your boxers to the side, even though there's like a hole in the middle, is nuts. <laughs> Bro, that shit is fucking hilarious. You got breakaway boxers? <laughs> so, let me ask you. Now, I doubt that you've ever been in a situation where it's like, yo, I'm not sure, but the food or something like nudged you into doing something. Well, at least I hope you didn't. But, you know, it's, it, it happens in life. But what is one thing that somebody has done for you that you gratefully appreciated in that heavy of a sense, but is fucking stupid? Like, we have to acknowledge that as much as I love the idea of 10 hot wings and a blue Gatorade, that's fucking simple. What simple shit has hit your heart? Honestly, I think I said six wings. <laughs> six wings and a Powerade. <laughs> Honestly, it, it, it could be something as simple as, like, whatever I'm getting, like, let's say it's a burger or a taco or whatever, if it's, like, top tier, like, maybe it's, like, tri-tip tacos and then, like, I don't know, beer to go with or something, like, that that's an easy slam dunk for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you're pulling your boxes to the side. <laughs> I, it's, I have a weak spot for food. My girl knows this for a fact. <laughs> I mean, I think I think it's unfair because I think it's our ancestors. I, I'll, <laughs> I'll use them as a scapegoat. I think it was years and years of society putting out, you know, you got to have a wife that could cook and yada, yada. And then just men's like that. That's what I got to look out for. If she could cook, even to this day. You know, you'll see it on social media. Oh, is she cooking like this? Oh, is she single? Yada yada. That's that's why I blame it on. So like it's it's in my DNA to be having that that weak spot. Bro. <laughs> that little that little soft area. Oh, you give me a compliment. I'm damn near 
If you're somebody I care about, you give me a compliment. I'm damn near like, all right, you can. Sir, you, you can get need the therapy. <laughs> you need therapy. <laughs> you said, oh, you're looking nice today. I'm like, yep, I'm going to be looking nice on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe I'm not that simple. But then again, I've also been told that like I'm very uh, oblivious. If if a girl's like trying to flirt yet again, with me, I'm not saying it couldn't be anybody to do this. Like, I mean, it's been so long. I'm literally thinking of what situations going on with my girl. I if thought she this was like just as a whole in our something. life. No, not as no, no, no. I, I didn't God, know you're no. talking about it. Has There's to be certain... today, this week. No, that was the I. I have one. That I'll bring up. I actually have a funny one that I'll bring up. Um, here's a funny situation. I think I talked about it on the podcast before. But I haven't really had too many women approach me, which, I mean, yes, I have, but most of the time it's bad. I tell you what, between my score and your score, you definitely have more women approached you. Yes, but it's never, it's not always good. I remember that girl was like, I'm like, hey, where's the party at? And she just looked at me dead in the face on the phone and was like, in your bedroom. Good and Lord. was so, like, once, once I walked away, she was so nonchalant that, like, she, she didn't even care. I just looked back and she just was like, and walked on. Mm. It didn't phase her. She just shot the shot with nothing. She didn't give a fuck. But, um, you know, that's how I, I honestly, that's like. She, the, she treated you like a Pokemon. She was, For real. She, she was watching Pokeball. that Pokeball wiggle and then she's like, oh, nothing. Never mind. All right. All right. Fuck it. I'm Back off to, to Ruby Road. <laughs> 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 but, um, so I remember one time I was out with my homegirl and we went out to this place and we got drinks and I was talking about this. And this dude was trying to holler at my homegirl and he bought us drinks. And I was like, hey, look, I don't know. All I'm saying is he paid the cost. you buy me something don't mean I owe you anything. Look, he bought us something. So there's nothing I could give him. So can he show my appreciation for me? (laughs) Let him know that he's appreciated. <laughs> oh my god! No, um, yeah, like quick things like that. Like food was definitely one of them, um, especially because I was broke as fuck. So, like, yeah, if you were like, hey, um, especially if you knew my situation, and you're like, hey, come over for dinner. Um, you know, I'll work on picking you up or something like that. I know you don't got shit in your house. So I was like, ugh, fucking heart. Mm-hmm. It's like matching tattoos today. <laughs> Have you done a matching tattoo? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you said, wait, what? I'm just saying, like, what I'm, what I was putting out was like very, very, uh, yeah, me and- me and my I didn't know we was exaggerating a little bit. My bad. I got <laughs> caught up in the moment. <laughs> got caught up in my feelings. <laughs> yeah, was, you know, me and this I girl was looking was... at myself like, damn, maybe like I should be like more appreciative. Maybe I should <laughs> get a matching tattoo today. Me and you know, we got matching money is the root of all evil tattoos on our forearms. Yeah. <laughs> I got a tattoo on on my back that says it's the bitch you love to hate. <laughs> and if you look lower, it says Lottie Dottie. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking great. But, okay. Let's think. There has to be a situation. Oh, I mean, I was a shitbag. Yeah, I definitely dated a girl for a cell phone. I definitely dated a girl because she had money and she was able to take people out to eat at Taco Bell after school. Um, 
I dated a girl because it was close to Christmas and she had money and I knew I'd get a pair of shoes. Um, no, I wasn't that guy. But that I, was, I wasn't, I wasn't that guy. I, if anything, like there would be girls that I wasn't attracted to and I knew that they liked me and I would just basically try my best to like stiff arm them without being mean. Like, All right. So what was your go to for letting a woman know that you knew was interested in you that you're not interested? What was your go to move? Um, Cause I, I pulled some shit that try, females try would do. to ignore them and use as much distance and uh, walk the other way as many times as possible. Oh man, I look down at my phone. Even though this is the age where there's no smartphone, so obviously I wasn't doing much. <laughs> Not like you're getting a notification. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just the equivalent of looking at your watch. <laughs> For real. But man, I took a page out of the out of the women's book. Man, if a girl was trying to holler at me that I knew liked me, but I didn't fuck with her, I for sure would hit shit like, oh my God, you know, you're such a good friend. Aren't we just <laughs> the best friends? <laughs> yeah. Yo, this is why I fuck with you. I love having a friend like you. Like, I value you being a friend so much. You're You're giving, like, sister energy, you know? Oh my God, sis! You're like, like it, you're like family. Oh my God! You invited to the cookout as a family member. <laughs> yo, it, yo, I'm saying though, it's like we came out of the same ball sack. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? Come <laughs> on, go sis. Go right. <laughs> yeah. Um. I had, as you know, I had no game as as a youngin, grown up. So. I had a hard enough time telling a girl that I liked them, let alone letting them know that I don't want anything to happen. So. Yeah, I, I, I may, I may have been dreaming on this one, but I remember the day when uh, I think I was over there, and then we were gonna we were gonna go over to my spot for like a week, and. Um, you know, just pretty much spend some time together. But um, I was trying to set you up with this girl on the phone, and us, we must I, have been. I remember we, this. We must have been in like seventh grade. Yeah. And um, I'm like, yo, this girl's hella cool. She was like one of my own girls. She was hella cool. Um, I'm like, she's hella cool, she's funny, she fucks with football, like, she's just a cool-ass chick, right? So, I had you talk on the phone with her, and um, at first, I was like, you kind of got nervous, so I told you to put it on speakerphone so we could all talk to each other. And then I'm trying to put some extra sauce on it, and I'm like, oh, yeah. You know, my cousin was looking at your MySpace page. Uh, he said you look good. He said you look like a a neck bone, <laughs> like a smoking <laughs> neck bone. <laughs> so, I don't remember that. I didn't say that. I'm okay, just throwing okay. this is just for comedian. <laughs> I do I remember I being nervous as hell, and I remember for like ten seconds, like taking the phone away, walking into another room to talk and then coming back and then uh, handing the phone back to you. You guys chopped it up a little more, got off the phone, and then you were like, yeah, she just straight up told me that you just, you're a nice guy, but you just have no game. Yes. And, <laughs> and that I was... shit was like, <laughs> oh, my chest. But I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that. And I tell you what, you know, that, that stuck with me. Um, it didn't help. <laughs> I never got any more game, but it was good to know. I think I think it helped in the sense of, like, don't try to be that guy that, you know, tries to put on game. Like, if I just am myself, like, either it'll work or it won't work. But half the time it works, you know. 
of that shit. I remember hearing that and I was just like, it was it was one of those fucked up things where like, yeah, if it was somebody else, I probably would have laughed. But once she said that about, I, I got a little defensive. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> What do you mean? That's my cousin. You know what I mean? What are you talking That's about? My cousin, we supposed to we supposed to be adults and then go to the players club. Look, all, all I'm saying is like, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe you was hurt by somebody <laughs> and you just don't know how to love. <laughs> how to love. It ain't my, my fault you ain't listen, little white. For real. Nah, nah. I, I had no game. But I, I, at the same time, fault, too, fault. I know what your ringtone is. <laughs> at the same time, too, I I'm sorry, I was so new to everything. I was just like, I'm just going to copy whatever I see my cousin do. <laughs> whatever, however he talk, however he say shit. Yeah, I'm like seven foot. <laughs> 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 yeah, I wear like size. 15 shoes. Said, Just what? a regular what? regular day. So what's up? You went to tall niggas? <laughs> <laughs> you like basketball? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just scored like 35 on this little white boy. It was something yeah. light. You know, I only paid for like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Bro, you remember... When we were going to school and how serious some of our basketball games got. Yeah. That that shit got real. It why got is it why is it with with like uh basketball, it feels like out of everything was the most emotion inducing like type of sport. Anything else like wall ball, uh four square Tether ball. Um, I didn't see people do football too much. Or no, I, they almost never did football when we went to school together. Um, mm. I've seen soccer happen like twice, but no, it was it was handball and fucking basketball. Yeah, but something about basketball, whether you're a kid or adult, like. Depending on how well that that game goes and who you playing against, it could just easily just end up in a fight. Oh, how are we, you going to start your morning and be like, you know what, I want to get some exercise in, I want to, you know, play some basketball, and then just out of nowhere, use in a fight? Well, now that I think about it, that's hella funny because we really would go out and play basketball on first break. Mm-hmm. Which was literally like ten o'clock in the morning, nine thirty in the morning, going outside, playing basketball. Mm-hmm. Not good at basketball. Terrible. I'm going to put. I, I. We were not good. We had no idea. I thought a pivot meant you had to have one foot planted. Mm-hmm. So I would literally put one foot planted, take a step, plant that foot. <laughs> and swing around and just keep on going. Like I, you're traveling. No, I was I'm pivoting. <laughs> I am fucking pivoting. Oh my god! I'm, I, I was hitting. I don't even know what the fuck I was doing. Oh man! I was throwing. I was throwing the elbows like crazy. Don't let me try to grab the ball because if I grab the ball, I'm literally going to try to rip it from your hands and throw up a shot that is going to hit. Probably not even air. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's crazy, too, is basketball has always been, like, a little something that I, like, dabbled in. Because even as a kid, my pops, you know, bought a basketball hoop, put it in front of the house. And I would, I would learn little things. Like, from your brother, he would tell me, like, you know, aim for the square so it could bank in there. Didn't matter how much you taught me, it didn't make me any better. <laughs> Man, I thought I was going to be that dude. I, if I, dog, if I would have taken half the time that I spent on trying to be good at basketball and applied it to anything else, like I needed, I needed somebody to just tell me, 
You're not gonna be Michael Jordan, <laughs> <laughs> bruh. I okay, just okay. All right, like you're like rolling your eyes. Okay, whatever. I've seen my, like Mike. If Bow Wow can do it, and I'm taller than him, <laughs> my ass is over here. Like, hey, look, I'm already like six, seven inches taller than most people. So everybody's got my shoulder. So the, what that means is when I grow up, I, everybody else is going to be on my shoulder. And they're going to be like this height. So I might fuck around and be like seven feet tall. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like that's my logic. I was like, I'm going to be seven feet tall. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to dominate this shit. Yeah, you're just going to bully people. <laughs> now, unfortunately, I'm about... I'm not even going to say what I was going to say because, uh, yeah, no. Yeah, that, that's, I, I that's, notice whenever that's you more stop of a pause, yourself. That's more of a pause-worthy moment than I think I could get away with. Whenever you stop yourself, it's usually a good sign. <laughs> you, you usually have no filter, so when the filter actually kicks in, it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga said improvement. <laughs> yeah, he's learning. <laughs> About three, four years into the podcast. <laughs> he said, "Man, some of the shit that I've cut out of this show, <laughs> for real, all of us, <laughs> all of us." Infamy had some wild moments, so I'll give it to him. He he might have, Infamy would have been canceled. Like we're not even a big enough podcast, but Infamy would have blown up our podcast, getting canceled. <laughs> not even that. He would just get canceled by like his females in his life. <laughs> Oh my god! If they just if they just band together and just like watch through the podcast and then like had like a little room with a little corkboard and yarn and they're like putting shit together like oh he said this on this episode and that means he was talking about me when we was hanging out and gold toe socks still means he shops at Sears mm-hmm. then oh Bro, my god that's the most old man <laughs> I know <laughs> the old man thing that I've ever fucking heard. I was I was a little kid having to wear gold toe socks. I can I didn't know any better. I was like, I I don't have money to buy my own socks. Everyone else got the you know the Vans, the Nike, all this shit. My shit just got a little yellow at the tip. <laughs> Bro, my fucking my fucking ass. I I got my socks and shit from the swap meet. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I, may have, I may have played it cool, but my shit was all black and would have like some random fucking writing on it. And you wash that bitch one time, it goes from crispy black to ashy black instantly. Mm-hmm. Like the dye never fully set in the fabric. Yeah. So like first time you wear it, you got like straight up crazy black marks on the insoles of your shoes, man. Ah. Uh. I feel like that's that's the move. Like when you want to be crispy, but you you kind of down bad, you just go to the swap me or go wherever where they got like the thirty pack of white tees. You wear them one time and throw them away. Bro, I remember going to the swap me, and I got this pair of jeans. And I'm like, these jeans is hard as fuck. Man, they're $6, bro. I'm on. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy this shit. And I'm going to come back to school hella clean, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, I got white tees for days. So I always got a Coke white. And I'm fucking heading to school. And I'm about to be crispy as fuck. I go to school, right? And I remember walking to school. And, you know, in the Bay Area, if y'all ain't from there, it's always cold in the mornings. Always. Uh-huh. Like, it could be 90 degrees at 12 o'clock. But it's going to be 60 degrees at 7. Yep. Or 57 at 7, you know? So I got my coat on. Got my big-ass CD player in my coat that barely fits in my pocket. Bumping the best of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, which is <laughs> E-40's fucking greatest hits. And I go to school, right? And it starts getting warm. 
So I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to go put my jacket in my locker, right? So I'm like, yo, I got I got I still got to have my CD player on me, bro. I just put fresh batteries in this bitch. Nigga, I'm bumping my shit. <laughs> like this is, this is it, right? So I put my jacket in. I'm walking out, right? I'm holding my CD player and I go into class and I remember it was math class and they're like, "All right, Devonta, you got to either put that in your backpack or put it in your pocket or something. I'm like, I don't really want to put it in my backpack. I don't want to squish this pristine Phillips CD player Mm -hmm. with a clear front so that way you could see the disc spinning. It was fly shit. Oh my God, it was like (laughs) spinners. For real. (laughs) So I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to put it in my pocket. I, I reach over to my right pocket and I notice I can't get in it. And I start pulling. And I notice these niggas sewed my pocket shit. <laughs> my front pockets, bro. So they, I go to the other side. Sewed that pocket shit, too. And I'm over here thinking, fuck, nigga. Now, I can risk it and just take my scissors and cut the seam. And see if there's a pocket in there, or maybe these niggas didn't put pockets in this bitch at all. And I'm gonna cut a seam and I'm just gonna have two fucking holes on my thighs. <laughs> so then I'm in class trying to be like sneaky and shit, like reaching into my pants to try to see through my belt, my fucking clip on Dickie's belt, to try to see if I actually have pockets in my pants. Bro, that. <laughs> It took me that whole entire period to figure out, A, whether I was going to be able to cut it or not, and B, whether it was worth it. I didn't learn shit that day in third <laughs> period. <laughs> I was. It's funny that you say that. I, I was thinking about looking back at school, at least a good 70... 70 to 80 percent of what I was taught and this is during the time where like I'm more concerned with girls and my the way I look and everything yada yada I didn't retain shit my my thinking was just getting through this class I was there just staring at that clock it's like fuck pretty soon first period's going to be over then we got to go yeah, I'd be so excited. And then once I get in the second period, I'm like, fuck. Let's hurry up and get to third period. <laughs> like, I did not want to be in school. I just, the only time I cared about was just lunchtime. So, let me ask you a question. Would you have performed better in school if your parents told you, hey, look, you keep your grades up? You don't fuck around in school, then every weekend, I'm going to make sure that I'll give you a ride to go see the girl you're trying to talk to, put a little bit of money in your pocket, so that way you can go buy her some ice cream or some fly shit like she never had ice cream before in her life. Like the stupid shit that we thought was cool. Mm -hmm. Do you think if your parents allowed you a certain amount of time for macking, like a set schedule, you're like, yo, Saturday through Sunday, I'm on my shit. Do you think you would have had a 4.0 GPA? Maybe. I think it would have been short-lived. I think what would be more efficient is if they made sure I stayed crispy. Like, mm. you know, we going to get you some white Air Forces every month. We won't get you the newest Jordans every month, you know, or just something to be like, ooh, like, I'm working for something. Bro, I would have been waterlogged if that happened to me. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. Man, I wouldn't even be able to pick up a pencil. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I, I had such a tough time with fashion and, you know, just learning how to, like, put myself together. Just looking back, I'm just like, damn, bro. Like, I get it. a long way. <laughs> I get it. I may have looked nice, but man, I had some ghetto ass moments. I I walked to school in vans in the rain 
that had holes in them. My feet would get wet. And I remember putting sandwich bags, turkey bags, got big ass feet. Fuck y'all niggas. <laughs> Over my socks and then putting my shoes on. So that way I walked to school and didn't have wet feet. And I remember getting in and going to the bathroom and trying to take off the turkey bags. And this nigga had the audacity to try to confront me about the turkey bags that I had on my feet. <laughs> Bro, I almost killed that man. <laughs> Bro, the struggle is real. I understand. Hey, but yeah. <laughs> but well, let's get into this pot. Uh, let's, it's towards the end of the playlist. pot. Yeah. It's playlist time. Yeah, uh, we got three minutes on the clock for the episode. I'm going to go with something that would make Infamy proud. I'm going to go with Never Enough by AZ and Rick Ross. I was just I, listening to Spotify. I have like a little playlist that's like a little hip hop uh, type of playlist. Like, you know, Joey Badass, Trap Call Quest, yada, yada. It auto played. This song came up. It sounded dope. Again, it's never enough by AZ and Rick Ross. That's tight. That's tight. I mean, Rick Ross always comes crazy on a feature. Always, right. always. Um, so the song I'm gonna put on is by the Blue Buck. Fuck, I can't even say this nigga's name or the group's name. Blue Bucks Clan, featuring Jeremiah. Uh, it's let me know. Tight ass song, R and B vocals, talking on some gangster shit. Like, hey, girl, if you're trying to fuck with me, just let me know. That's, that's all cold, we that's need. That's a cold rap name. Blue Bucks Clan. Yeah, niggas from LA. They 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 got some good music, and um, they definitely have some money because some of their features are crazy. Mm -hmm. Dope track. But for y'all that don't know. I would implore all of you guys to download AMP. And when you hop on AMP, you need to follow the FPSP podcast on AMP. We're curating music from time to time, making some playlists, making some vibes. We both hop on from time to time and just, you know, vibe. Uh -huh. It's cool. That's a, that's a place where you can hop on a call, chop it up with us request music we could talk about anything in the fucking world and at the same time you're still gonna hear some fucking good music it's a good time i tell everybody that our podcast is literally barroom talk with the guys this just takes it that step forward adding in the music on amp is fucking tight and that's where we're really feeling like we have the bar with the fellas talking our bullshit Mm -hmm. So it's something look, worth looking into. We're working there. We're going to try to get a set schedule. Follow us, FPSP Podcast, on all um, platforms, social media, everything like that. Give us a like and a comment, and uh, we'll holler at you soon. Yep. Ask for more than a 10-piece. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Peace.